Hey guys, this is Sergey. I've been thinking about this topic for a long time, so hear me out. I want us to stop using the dispose pattern. Okay, I still want to use iDisposable interface, using blocks and whatnot to manage the resources properly, but I want us to get rid of this disposable disposing nonsense. It doesn't make sense today, and it probably wasn't such a good idea from the start. But before criticizing the dispose pattern, let's understand what is a pattern. So the pattern is a reusable, well-established solution to common programming problem within a specific context. Let's look into a few examples. Let's say that we want to implement a distributed log. And in this case, the implementation needs to be smart, because debug warner info methods cannot just directly write the messages to a distributed store, because it might take a while and it might drastically affect the application performance. Instead, the logger instance should create a message based on the method calls, it should store the message into message queue, and it needs to be another component like message uploader that will pull the messages from the message queue to upload them into the distributed store. And this is a very common design pattern called producer-consumer design pattern. This pattern is so common that you probably have used this a lot without even realizing that. But it does follow the definition of a design pattern. We have a common programming problem. We want to separate the process of creating work from the process of doing that work. And we have a well-established solution to this problem. We have a bounded or unbounded thread-safe queue that can be shared between multiple producers and consumers. Let's look at another example. Let's say that we have a managed environment with an automatic memory management, and we want to avoid resource leaks when the resources are not cleaned up explicitly. So we, we can associate a cleanup logic with the resource that will be called by the garbage collector when the object becomes unreachable. We can call this non-deterministic resource cleanup pattern that is widely used in different managed environments. Different managed environments do implement this pattern slightly differently, which is okay. But the idea is the same in all of them. You can associate the cleanup logic one way or another with the instance. And if the resource was not cleaned up explicitly, the GC will call your logic for the eventual resource cleanup. To understand the disposed pattern in its current form, or just to use the resources effectively in .NET applications, you need to understand the difference between native and managed resources. So native or unmanaged resources is something like in pointer. It's an opaque pointer that is obtained from a native code. Once the opaque pointer is wrapped into a class that implements a disposable interface, it becomes a managed resource. Just based on the type, you can clearly separate the two. If it's in pointer or some similar struct, it's a native resource. If it's iDisposable or a class that implements iDisposable, it's a managed resource. Let's look at the dispose pattern. The idea is that the class has native and managed resources at the same time. It needs to implement iDisposable interface, it should have the finalizer, and the main cleanup logic should be in this disposable disposing method. The public dispose method should suppress the finalization to avoid the finalizer to be called, and then it should call disposeBool method by passing true to indicate that this method is called from the dispose method. And the finalizer should pass false as the parameter. And then the resource cleanup logic should be in this dispose method. It should check the parameter and release managed resources only when the parameter is true. And regardless of the parameter, it always needs to release unmanaged resources. Let's look at the code. So we have resource class that has both native and managed resources. So it implements disposable interface that calls dispose. It's still debatable whether you need to call GC suppress finalize before calling dispose method or after that. And all the logic is inside this disposable disposing method. It checks if the instance is already disposed to avoid double disposing because the guidelines are that you should be able to call the dispose method more than once on the instance. And if the disposing flag is true, then you can free up managed resources. And then, regardless of this flag, we need to clean up unmanaged resources. And the finalizer calls dispose false. And this is so-called basic dispose pattern, when the class only has managed resources. You still need to have dispose method and dispose bool disposing method. The dispose method still should call GC suppress finalize even though this class doesn't have the finalizer. The idea is that the derived class might add one. The second dispose method needs to be protected virtual because class is not sealed. It can be private if the class is sealed. This method needs to check if disposing parameter is true and only in this case to release managed resources. The full dispose pattern assumes that the class mixes native and managed resources at the same time, and the basic dispose pattern assumes that the native resources might be added in the derived type. Let's unpack what's wrong with it. The issue with this pattern is that 
it assumes that it's common to mix native and managed sources in the same class or in a single class hierarchy. But this is not common, like not common at all. Having unmanaged resources in your code is not common, and mixing a native resource like in Pointer with a managed resource like Filestream is even less common and just not a good idea. These resources belong to different levels of abstractions, and mixing low-level code, the code that works directly with InPointer, with high-level code that reads and writes with, to a file stream, makes the code very hard to maintain. One argument that you might make is, but why bother? It's a common practice, what's wrong with it? The issue is that people do get this pattern wrong. In my career, I've seen quite a bit of cases when the resource management was not done correctly. Some issues were quite minor, like an empty finalizer that was making the applications a tiny bit slower. But other cases were way more serious, causing the apps to crash. If we search for disposed faults on GitHub, we'll find almost 100,000 hits. It means that we have 100,000 finalizers, and I'm pretty sure that some of them are redundant and some of them not implemented correctly. Let's look at a few examples. By the way, this is not a critique for the code. This is a critique of the pattern that is easy to use incorrectly. So let's look at this example. This code calls this pose passing false, and if the parameter is false, nothing is going on. So in this case, the finalizer is just redundant. Kind of not a big deal, it makes the application a tiny bit slower, but okay. Let's look at another example. We have a session that calls dispose false. Let's look at the implementation. So it implements double dispose, which is good. Then if the parameter is true, it does nothing. And then it calls close regardless of the parameter. And if we look at this method, we have lock and we have do close. And this do close uh, touches a bunch of resources. So obviously this should not be called from the finalizer. And it's not clear what's going to happen if you'll obtain a lock from the finalizer and you'll accidentally get a deadlock. So this is very dangerous implementation. Let's look at another example. So we have the Z socket that calls dispose false. Uh, and okay, so if disposing, then we call close. So in this case, if disposing is false, meaning that it is called from the finalizer, we do nothing. But let's look at close method. But the close method itself actually closes native resources. So this close method should be called regardless of the parameter to avoid memory leak. So the class has the finalizer, but it won't save us if you forget to call the dispose method eagerly. Okay, let's look at another example. So we have sender that calls dispose false. And again, a very similar pattern. If the disposing parameter is true, we do clean up logic, but otherwise we do nothing. And again, this code cleans up unmanaged resources, and it needs to be cleaned up regardless of the parameter. So this is again another case that there is a finalizer, you think that it will save you, but it won't save you actually. So what's the suggestion? First, never use unmanaged resources directly in your code. Always create a managed wrapper, preferably by deriving from safe handle. Second, never mix managed and unmanaged resources in the same class. But if you follow the first rule, you will never have that. The third one is just release managed resources directly in dispose method. No disposable disposing nonsense. And here how you wrap unmanaged resources. Just derive from safe handle. And in this case, you just need to implement release handle method and just override is invalid property. And that's it. You don't need to override disposable disposing. So the safe handle itself doesn't follow the dispose pattern. And the most common case is going to be very simple. If a class owns managed resources, you just need to implement the dispose method and call the dispose for your underlying resources. And that's it. Typically, you don't even need to implement the double disposing logic manually because the underlying resources can be disposed more than once. You still need to write a test to make sure that it's okay to call the dispose method twice, but you need to do this regardless whether you implement this manually or not. And again, you might ask, but what about extensibility? What if we would have to change the code because my manager will ask to add native resources to the derived class? As I mentioned already, the case when you have to mix native and managed resources is extremely rare and undesirable in the first place. And if for some reason you have to do that, then just change the code. We do change the code with requirements change, so this case is not special. But unlike other business requirements, we know that this specific change is not likely to happen, and you have better alternatives just by not using native resources directly and by creating managed wrappers for them. The last argument you might have is about libraries. Should you use the full dispose pattern if you work on reusable code? My personal take that we should stop using the dispose pattern everywhere. 
If the code is literally part of the BCL, okay, fine, you would have to follow the pattern. But even for widely used libraries, I would suggest using a simpler approach. If someone would have to mix manage native resources, they'll have an option to wrap your class instead of deriving from it. And if you really, really, really want to mix native and managed resources at the same time, then probably you should use a different approach. Instead of using this bool disposing nonsense, you should just clearly separate two different virtual methods. One for releasing managed resources and one for releasing unmanaged resources. And in this case, the dispose method will check if it's disposed or not to avoid double disposal and then call release managed resources and release unmanaged resources. And then the release unmanaged resources will be called from the finalizer. This is how the dispose pattern should be implemented in the first place. I honestly believe that we should ban the dispose pattern and never use it again. It's brittle, hard to understand, and confusing for most devs. And first of all, it's not a pattern by definition, because it focuses on a very rare current case when the native and managed resources are used in the same class or the same hierarchy of classes. A good pattern leads to good design, and the dispose pattern pushes us into the wrong direction. It makes the code more complicated without giving us anything back. It was invented way before it became clear that the scenario it is optimized for is rare, but it became the best practice and everyone started following it. But it's okay or even desirable to reconsider things over time. Let's obsolete this pattern and make our code a bit better. Just always wrap native resources into managed wrappers and clean up managed resources directly in dispose method. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what that net topic you want me to cover next. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, be curious, and see you next time.